Hello, it's HP Lamina again with module 6, Public Law N6. Uh, the topic for today is Doctrines of Law and the Rule of Law. Reference material is Public Law N6 book by A. Kruger. My own reference, International Law by John Dugard as well as the South African Constitution 108 of 1996. So the material required for you students is just public law book by A. Kruger. So in this module, this module is based on the conflict of the doctrines of the rule of law. The rule of law states that the law rules and that is all. On the other hand, the doctrine of sovereignty is an independent authority over a geographical area, for example, the state. In terms of the doctrine of sovereignty, sovereignty is the highest in a state that is not subject to any authority, that is, anything or anybody. The third is the doctrine of the division of powers, which is against the tyrannical laws. What is meant by tyrannical laws? That refers to cruel, oppressive government rules like those during the time of uh, apartheid in South Africa. The sovereignty doctrine, let's take the sovereignty doctrine now, is an independent authority of a geographical area, for example, the state. It's the highest authority in the state that is not subject to any other authority. The French writer Jean Borden, who also studied, made a research about the sovereignty. He said, Sovereignty as the absolute power of the state was the correct one. He claimed that sovereignty is the supreme power and is not restricted by laws except by God. So in the 17th century, Louis XIV was the king. You remember that during those days, the world was ruled by the kings and the queens. So those people were very despotic. They were dictators. They were authoritarians. So if a person is an authoritarian, is a dictator, you cannot say anything against that person. And during those days, people who were against the powers of the kings or the rule of the kings or the queens, they were killed. So Louis XIV, he had a sovereign power and nobody had any legal power over him. That is why in most cases when they questioned him about his rule, he would exonerate himself from, from the lawsuit using his sovereign powers because he was a law unto himself. Then let's go to how did they see the sovereignty? There's Thomas Smith, an England writer. He said sovereignty belonged to parliament and not to the king or queen. He believed that the nation is ruled by vote and election of parliament. Sovereign means the ultimate decision rests with the people. For example, in, in South Africa, parliament is the highest legislative authority and therefore it's sovereign. Parliament is, however, bound by certain rules and is subject to the constitution that is in South Africa, right? Then let's move to another doctrine. 
the doctrine of the division of powers. Montesquieu, one of the old French writers, the French, in fact, he was a philosopher. He developed this doctrine, the doctrine of the separation of powers. And he said, the legislative and executive powers, are un if they are united in the same person or in the same body, of magistrates, there can be no liberty. In other words, there can be no freedom. So according to him, government is divided into three authorities, namely legislative authority, that is the one which makes laws, executive authority, that's the one which executes laws, that is by ministers and government departments. Judicial authority, that is judge, if law was broken, then the courts will take over. These authorities can control one another to stop abuse of power and promote civil liability. So in South Africa, our South African public law is based on British colonial system. Legislative powers rest with parliament. Okay? Let's go to the rule of law in South Africa. It means no one is above the law. Even the president of the country is not above the law in South Africa. It's unlike during the times of the kings and the queens, during those centuries, 16th, 15th, 17th century. So the rule of law means no one is above the law, right? And then, if that is the case, how are citizens protected by this rule, the rule of law? So the state may not execute its powers arbitrarily. Individual liberty should be upheld. Equality before the law, no punishment if no law has been broken, Breach of law must be established in courts. Everybody is ruled by the same laws and the same courts. It's not that if you are, you are the president, you must go to your own court, or certain individuals or parliamentarians must go to their own court. They are using the very same courts which we are using. The Constitution also protects the rights and property of individuals and corporations. Uh, citizens are also protected against arbitrary governance, dictatorship, and mob rule. It aims to ensure a stable government. It, it also aims for economic and development of society. So under these circumstances where we are in a democratic country in South Africa and everything is ruled according to law. What are the conditions that the state must take into account in an emergency situation before they take action or declare war? The answer is there are two conditions. The danger must be so bad in such a way that do not protect the citizens. Two, the action must be taken. This action which must be taken must be in proportion with the emergency. Let me give you an example. For example, if you punch me with a clenched fist, I can also punch you back with a clenched fist, but not to shoot you. So, I'm sure you'll enjoy the conflict of the sovereignty as well as the rule of law. You could see the difference between the two, that the other one is too primitive and the other one 
It's more democratic. That is the rule of law, right? This is the end of module six, and I will come back with module seven. It will follow in due course. I wish you all the best in your studies. Stay safe.